the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this catechism class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, It is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, light up my darkness. O Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Hello friends, this is Shamshabhada Paki, Department of Catechism. Coming up with yet next another chapter, chapter number 6, Holy Bible, the Written Word of God. This is very beautiful chapter and very useful chapter. As compared to the other chapters that we have learned, uh, this is going to be a very practical and a very useful, uh, handy chapter which you can take home with various messages, various informations and various interesting facts about the Holy Bible. I am sure all of you have a copy of the Holy Bible. Please keep it next to you as you uh, go through this text because at various point of time you can just turn over to the Bible and look into various books especially the content, the index part of the Holy Bible to understand it in a very beautiful and easy way. So let us get into the chapter. So that is the introduction uh, of the uh, text of Holy Bible. One must understand that uh, the Holy Bible must be understood not just as a legal textbook. It is not a scientific textbook nor it is a historical textbook but one must understand it as a book or a personal diary written by God which is full of messages of love, care, concern, pain uh, or at times anger too. So just like you write a personal diary in your day-to-day -day life, God uh, through various people was writing a, a personal diary or a journal with various things of his day-to-day -day life of various centuries in the lives of various people or the people of God and he wanted this book to be read by others I think so you have might come across the book uh, uh, called the diary of Anne Frank very famous book and she so beautifully writes down each day how they were trying to escape from the 
Germans and they were trying to be uh, saved from the Nazi f- army and all how their family went through what were her fears what are her good thoughts and enjoyment her small little happiness and all those things so the bible has to be taken just like that it is a beautiful love letter it is a beautiful uh, diary uh, which is full of personal relationships personal uh, conversations personal messages for us those who live today in the century so bible has to be taken in that way but one must primarily understand that it is a history of divine revelation history of the divine revelation so when man tries to know uh, about god god is revealing himself to man and in this revelation in this give and take of knowing and uh, making them understand god is doing this through the divine revelation so uh, to abraham to isaac jacob moses joshua to all of them god revealed himself in one or the other way so in revealing himself to the israelites or to the people of god or to certain persons in the history god might have given just an aspect or an aspect of his of his or they might have understood only an aspect but in jesus we have the whole the complete uh, understanding the revelation of jesus that is why we say jesus is a definitive complete absolute revelation of god in jesus is a fullness of all revelation and therefore we are trying to see the history of divine revelation in four stages the first one is a divine revelation through creation now how is divine revelation through creation the first thing you must understand in your mind is creation is full of mountains oceans sea animals birds trees flowers sand rock rivers and all those things natural things that you see uh, in the creation so when you get up in the morning you see the sun rising in the east and that moment of looking at the sun rising itself gives you such beautiful experience of you coming up on onto a new day and understanding how god has created this beautiful day only for you and it is not that somebody is try pulling up sun like a curtain outside uh, out of that mountain but it is just that creation has been so beautifully designed so beautifully planned by god so when sun uh, goes up the moon comes down or the moon comes up the sun goes down that beautiful in the change that happens in the creation is beautifully willed designed and planned by god that is the first thing secondly if you are on a mountain top and you look around you see the beauty of nature all around the depth the beauty of the suicidal points and all so on uh, the fog the clouds uh, the scenery that is there all around all of them preach the word of god in one way or the other but it is through our imagination through our experience through our enjoyment of understanding uh, the nature or if you on a fine day you go to the beach and sit there in solitude or just meditatively uh, uh, in meditation uh, feel the cool breeze or in the uh, on the beach then you will see how the depth of god's mercy is so much equal to the depth of the ocean so in the creation uh, just like the psalmist says in chapter 19 verses 1 the heavens are telling the glory of god and the firmaments proclaim his handiwork so that beautiful thing we we can see how creation is preaching creation is talking to us about god secondly we see how messengers of god messengers in the old testament new testament uh, we can see the prophets the kings Uh, the patriarchs the abraham isaac jacob moses joshua the leaders and the prophets mm-hmm. and the other kings so through them in the old testament they 
told to Israelites that this is God. God is love. God is merciful. God is kind. God is a jealous God. God is angry on you. God is loving you. God is taking care of you. See, God is taking you to wilderness. God has a plan for you. Just obey the word of God. So, through their words, through the words of the messengers, repeatedly and continuously, God spoke to to israelites or the people of god and in the third part we see jesus is a definitive revelation word of god in its fullness is visible to us in jesus the incarnate at the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god and this word is jesus jesus is the logos jesus was with god and jesus himself is the god so the fullness of all revelation fullness of all this understanding that we receive is in the revelation of jesus now one must understand that uh, the author to the epistle to the uh, uh, hebrews writes it that the word of god is fully visible after the incarnation in many and various ways by the prophets the god has spoken to us but now in the last days he has spoken to us through his son himself so that is a beautiful thing that we must try to understand in our day to day life that jesus is the ultimate revelation of god finally we see the divine revelation and the church so one must understand in a very practical way that one cannot have the divine revelation in its comple- completeness without the without uh, without Uh, being in the church only in the church can you have the complete knowledge of god complete knowledge of god in understanding him in making uh, interpretation of the word of god why do we say that uh, church is a custodian the proclaimer and the interpreter of the divine revelation so it is in the church that we have stipulated this will be the old testament this is the new testament and there were other books but the church has not accepted them because they may not be giving the true revelation true understand the proper uh, message of god so it is through the understanding of the church it is through the authority of the church that we all receive what is said to be the bible okay the deposit of faith then we will be seeing in the next topic that is bible word of god in the written form this is going to be very interesting uh, uh, you must understand it uh, word by word and you must closely follow with me the text in the first paragraph we see the holy bible contains only the written form of the divine revelation which was entrusted to the church by god the totality of the revelation is in the church because if you are outside the church you do not have the complete deposit of faith the whole tradition to understand the uh, revelation in its total you must be in the catholic church divine revelation is not recorded in the bible in the written form the divine revelation not recorded in the bible in the written form is called the sacred tradition in the catholic church so the word of god or the divine revelation which is not written the one which is written is said to be the word of god which is not written is said to be the sacred tradition so we don't have the sola scriptura that principle we have scripture along with tradition so we have a tradition which which is handed over to us by the fathers which is handed over to us by the saints martyrs the church fathers and we also have the divine word of god so these two uh, deposits these two realms they help us to understand the revelation in the completeness only in the holy catholic church so one must understand bible is not just a book it is a series of 73 divinely inspired books the holy bible god's name greek from the greek term biblia and all the books of the old testament old testament except the three books were written were written in hebrew the book of wisdom and the first and second book of maccabees were written in greek just all the books in the old testament were written in hebrew and all the new testament books were written in greek except 
for uh, what is said to be the gospel of matthew uh, in the language of aramaic aramaic because it is the language of jesus it is a dialect which was used uh, in the village or in that uh, locality where jesus lived jesus was born and brought up and it is very close to the uh, present day syriac we are accustomed to read the bible uh, in chapters and verses but that was not the case how bible was written one must not understand that okay jesus uh, god uh, revealed to somebody and said okay right genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 15 so this and this no that was not the case so one must understand that it was just a plain document uh, just like a newspaper or any other book which was just written down by according to the dictations of the holy spirit according to the divine inspiration but slowly slowly this was over a period of time was divided into a chapter and again into verses so this is one thing that we have to understand we did not get this book just like this from heaven okay this is the book take it these are the chapters these are the bible verses no it is cardinal stephen langton archbishop of england who divided the bible into chapters in 12 not 4 so it is in only in the uh, 12 Uh, not 12 not 4 year 12 not 4 that he divided it into chapters until then the whole book was just uh, can i say it clumsy or a uh, whole unit together uh, together it was given as a text to read and it was robert stephen a missionary again who divided it into bible verses in 1555 until then it was only divided uh, for nearly 300 years only into chapters after that 1555 it was again divided into verses and therefore we today we can count the whole bible contains 1334 chapters and 35527 verses this is going to be interesting information for you you can just underline it or just circle it with a pencil or pen and just use it uh, in one of your family prayer meetings or just try to outsmart somebody by asking these questions and uh, trying to puzzle them with your information according to the jewish tradition the old testament because they did not have the new testament and the bible or the holy scripture for them was the old testament collection it was divided into three the first one was torah then the prophets that is the nebim then nebui nebui then the, we had the writings that is ketubi so these were the three divisions of the holy book that jews had and the law was the first five books uh, in that composition or the first five books that we have in the pentateuch then they had the prophetic books the books of prophets not all of them but which we have today but most of them and then finally they had the writings which could be the wisdom writing the psalms and others and according to the christian tradition bible is divided into two the old testament and the new testament in the old testament you have books which can be historical books prophetical books instructional books while in the new testament we have the division gospels acts of the apostles epistles of saint paul uh, the catholic epistles and the revelation so uh, this is the division that they had in the jewish times and the uh, division that we have in the catholic christian tradition now how is this greek word canon or the canon of the bible one must understand this is a measuring rod or like a scale or like a, what we can say tape measuring tape that somebody uses to measure something the greek uh, word for such a measurement that was used by the carpenters is called uh, canon so uh, some something of this kind which can be used to measure uh, all whatever they are going to make by the carpenters was called canon so canon came to be known as bible the can because that is the measure how our life has to be lived according to the canonical books so measuring rod is a uh, of the christian life measuring bible is a measuring rod of christian life <coughs> sorry <coughs> so if one wants to see how the uh, catholic tradition has the 73 books what is the difference between the protestant uh, tradition let us see according to the catholic tradition the bible contains 73 canonical books 
but the protestant reformer martin luther declared four new testament texts namely hebrew james jude and revelation and seven old testament books namely the books of wisdom sirach first and second maccabees judith esther and tobit as non canonical so uh, when there was a protest and a division of another a group of believers went behind martin luther called to be the protestants they did not have these books hebrews james jude and revelation in the old testament and the wisdom sirach first and second maccabees judith esther tobit in the old testament because they had principally a difference of opinion in keeping these books within the canonical bible so until then the canon of the bible were 73 books again saint jerome who comes uh, much earlier in the time he stipulated that the 46 canonical books in the old testament and 27 books in the new testament now we will see which are the translations the greek translation of the old testament we said all the books uh in the first part we spoke about the hebrew uh, books all the books of the old testament was written in hebrew there were few books which was written in greek but these uh, books were translated into greek the greek translation of the old testament written in hebrew is called septuagint so the hebrew bible was translated into greek which was called septuagint in greek language why septuagint if you google you will find out it was written by some 70 scholars uh, 70 people coming together and various other details so just plainly understand the hebrew bible translated into greek is called septuagint it is the translation was completed around 180 bc before christ and septuagint bible contains 46 books saint jerome translates this Uh, this septuagint into latin which is called vulgate so the hebrew bible is translated into greek then from greek it is translated into latin which is called vulgate and it was translated by the uh, saint jerome and again you have a translation in syriac which is called the peshitta bible this was a bible that our forefathers and thomas christians they used all throughout their life and there are copies of this uh, which is in circulation there are uh, four uh, things that one must keep in mind when we say that the holy bible is a book inspired by god four things we have to keep in mind the first one is the writers received divine inspiration from the holy spirit secondly human authors wrote only or include only what god intended or wanted it to be in the holy scripture and bible will not make mistake with regard to the divine subjects finally the style language theological views of the home human authors will be reflected in the writings so the four principles first one is only those people who were divinely inspired to write something a sort of a message for the future generation or for the people of that time of that region only those who were inspired by the holy spirit those books are taken consideration into the canon of the bible secondly only those things which god wanted the people to write in the, the authors wanted to write down only those things so one must understand only those who were inspired by the holy spirit writes down the bible only those things that god wants them to write were written down by these authors thirdly the person's culture the person's a uh, style language and theological views of the human author who writes it it is a word of god word of god or the message of god but it is written by the person who is writing so it is according to his uh, human uh, circumstances his human uh, situation that he writes down so when i say god is love and he loves each and every one the way each one of you write an essay on this will be different isn't it if i ask you to write an essay on uh, god is love god is merciful all the essays or all the stories that you will be coming up will be original 
but it will be yours but it will be different it will be uh, giving us that understanding or uh, about that this message that god is merciful and one must also understand that this teaching that bible gives is only with regard to it will not make mistake with regard to the matters that it teaches about the divine subjects so you should not take bible and go out and argue with a scientist saying see the creation is not happening with the big bang it is happening uh, as per genesis 1 to 11 no you should not do that neither should you go to any historian and say okay in so and so year this was the king who was ruling what you said is wrong no you must not do that because the person who writes down who pens down because of various reasons maybe for mistakes of his soul or maybe due to the clerical mistakes or the corruption that has happened while transmission of the bible there can be differences or there can be wrong things but one must understand the divine message that bible transmits to us will not have any mistake secondly there could be mistakes humanly mistakes with regard to scientific things historical things or various other geographical things uh, details that has been given in this in the light of the above mentioned facts the divine inspiration is a divine act bible is written in human words and styles that is why what is originally written by human author is inspired by god which we said already the only criterion for measuring the authenticity of translation is its faithfulness to the original writing only those translations which we have the imprimatur of the catholic church are considered official translations we have to make sure therefore that the faithful use only translations having the imprimatur of a competent author- authority of the catholic church this is very important and i will show you how you can find out what is an imprimatur so this is the bible that i use for my personal study and understanding this is called the new jerusalem bible i will show you the cover so this is the new jerusalem bible and you have here called as the pocket edition and it is published by the st paul's communication and one must understand that there are other bibles which we can call as the nrsv bible or the new jerusalem bible or catholic edition bible king james version so you must have a clear understanding which bible is catholic which bible is not catholic that is what i want trying to make you understand here that is in our book bibles you will have here this thing nihil obstat or imprimatur the word which is given in the textbook imprimatur nihil obstat or imprimatur these are the two words through which you can understand whether this bible is recognized by the catholic church you must make it you must understand it very clearly all the bibles are not recognized by the catholic church king james version for example is a protestant uh, protestant uh, un, a protestant uh, translation and you might not find all the books or satya veda pustakam that is uh, another translation of um, malayalam copies that you find if you have that in your home that is not the bible holy bible that catholic church teaches us to use so one must have clear understanding that nihil obstat or imprimatur should you should check before buying a bible so good news bible or the new jerusalem bible or the nrsv bible these are the bibles which have the nihil obstat or imprimatur and you must uh, always use and only use this because uh, the 46 27 ratio that we said the 46 books in the old testament 27 books in the new testament uh, is the proper in this books and the translation is authentic the translations are original to the maximum uh, in this uh, catholic traditions that we must understand but at the same time the uh, protestant bible or bible of other sects there will be no 46 books there may not be 27 books in the uh, old oh, sorry in the new testament so you must understand the four things and explaining the divine uh, inspiration in the apostolic letter pope leo 13 
says that the Holy Spirit by his supernatural power inspired, transformed and helped the authors to understand and write inspirations of the Holy Spirit without error or defect. So the maximum, the word of God or the message of God was transmitted to the authors without mistake. To the maximum because Holy Spirit was helping them. But with regard to the geographical details, with regard to the historical facts, uh, scientific principles, one must not challenge any scientist, histor historian or anybody else with the use of Bible. Because this is a holy book of Christians. This is full of love. This is full of message for us to come to salvation, for us to grow in holiness. So this is not a scientific book. This is not an historical book. This is not a book or manual for geography or cooking. So you must take it in the sense that it is a book full of divine revelation. It is a book full of God's words of love. Now there are five senses you can use uh, to understand. If you take a Bible passage and you read it, you can understand that Bible passage in five ways. It could be in the literal sense, it could be in the spiritual sense, it could be in the symbolic sense, moral sense or anagogical sense. So when you read a Bible, the way you translate or interpret it can be in one of these five ways. And you must understand that literal sense, that is when Jesus says, love your neighbors, love your enemy and love your brother just as you love your God. That has to be taken in the literal sense. You cannot say, uh, okay, Jesus is telling some symbolism or he is telling some other uh, hidden meaning is there in that. No, the perfect meaning that is given in the, according to that Bible verse is, you have to love your neighbor. You have to love your enemy. You have to love your brother just as you love your God. The whole heart. Okay, so that is a literal sense. Now, can you take some of the Bible verses in literal sense? No. For example, uh, that there comes the importance of spiritual sense. For example, when Jesus says, If I is causing you to sin, take it out and throw it away. If hand is causing you sin, cut it off and remove it. Does it mean you have to take it in the literal sense? If then, all of us would have been handicapped all walking around in the Catholic Church. Many of us would not have bodies itself. Many of us would not have tongues. Many of us would not have eyes. <coughs> so, one must understand that here we have to take that Bible verse or that teaching of Jesus in the spiritual sense. What is he explaining? He is expecting us to close our eyes when it is causing us to sin. When it is causing us to fall into temptation. We have to stop watching movies. We have to stop watching videos. We have to stop watching reading or looking at something, somebody. That is the spiritual sense that Jesus is trying to tell us. Now there is symbolic sense. Now when uh, there is an episode in Bible, it has a symbolic meaning. That is, when you are said to be like, uh, so Peter is called to be the rock and on this rock I will build the church. So. The, Jesus is giving a symbolic meaning there. That symbolic meaning is to be understood that God has a hidden meaning which is given through that message. That's symbolic. That has to be found out. And then that has to be made as the interpretation. Now you will have the moral sense. For Bible can be used to give somebody an advice. Can be used to give instruction can be used to make rules and regulations. So that is a moral sense. You can decide for yourself what is good and right because of your moral conscience. More than that, you can read Bible and find out what is good and what is wrong. Because Bible has plenty of uh, instructions and advices which helps us to understand the right thing to do and the wrong thing to avoid. And finally, we have the anagogical sense. Anagogical sense is just simply when I tell you something you should keep in mind or when the you read the bible you should keep in mind that you are a citizen of heaven you are called to holiness you are called to eternal life so in that background you have to understand this message the person who is giving you this message is speaking to you in the 
in that realm that he has come from heaven he is in heaven and he is telling us that we are also belonging to heaven so we should understand we should make a, tra- a transmission of this message in such a way that we are of heaven we are citizens of heaven with the orientation that we have to the uh, we should have to understanding the bible and finally the final point that we should use is a interpretation of bible we should we have three principles that we should use the interpretation of bible interpretation of bible can be for various reasons now you see the fathers the preachers charismatic leaders they read the bible meditate on it and they give interpretations they have give classes lectures uh, and they give homilies the priests and bishops deacons they give homilies even the lay person can do this but they cannot do the public deliverance or public delivery of the interpretation of the bible during a holy eucharist so if you are in a family prayer meeting there are 10 of you or there is a common prayer group uh, that you have in your parish or in your youth uh, youth uh, among the youth group you can use a reading a bible and interpreting it how to do that there are three principles the first one is we must pay attention to the content and the unity of the whole bible though there are differences in the books of the bible there is a unity running through the presentation of the entire bible the basis of this unity is unity of the divine revelation and for all the books in the holy bible were written by the inspiration of the same spirit so one must understand that you cannot take a bible verse or just a word from the bible and interpret it in a very orthodox or a very extreme way in a way to harm somebody or give a misunderstanding so you when you take a bible verse and you try to understand it you should understand it in the unity of all the 73 73 books that you have in the bible there can be differences from first the first book of genesis to the last book of uh, revelation there can be difference but that differ- differences is giving us a beautiful uh, picture a united picture of the message of salvation so when you interpret you should interpret in the unity uh, that is g- running through the whole bible and the content okay the second one the living tradition of the whole church must be taken into account along with the harmony which exists between the elements of faith independent interpretation separated from the tradition can go wrong so when i interpret or my father or mother during a family prayer time if they interpret a bible passage they must have the understanding of the tradition of the church in the beginning we said the written word of god the written divine revelation is said to be the bible the word of god the written one there are also unwritten divine revelations which you can see in the sacred tradition of the church so the catholic church has two things the divine word of god as a written uh, a written divine revelation and the unwritten divine revelation as a tradition and we take both hand in hand and it is in the tradition that we have received the word of god the bible and it is only in uh, combination of the both a proper mixture of both you can interpret properly in the perfect authentic original interpretation of the bible you cannot say okay i will interpret it in my own way and if the tradition is telling something else then your interpretation is wrong clear so when you interpret you have to see the content and unity of the bible secondly you have to take into consideration serious understanding observation the traditions of the catholic church and finally the interpretation of the bible must be based on the christian faith and teaching of the church magisterium whatever you do whatever you try to understand or make uh, interpret the bible you must keep in mind that you should submit yourself in obedience uh, to the church magisterium church magisterium is official teaching organ of the church so the pope the bishops the priests the deacons and all other uh, elders of the church they are the magisterium of the church what they teach that is the true authentic understanding or teaching of the church the pope the bishops 
so according to their teaching the teaching of the church in the uh, documents of the church in the teachings of the church according to the teachings of the uh, church fathers according to the teachings of the saints you have to understand the interpretation so you your translation your interpretation cannot go against to against the understanding of the church magisterium so these are the three important things we are, uh, you have to keep in mind while understanding the interpretation of bible now let us have a quick uh go through what are the things we said in the first thing we said the divine revelation as a beautiful story bible is written down so it is like a daily journal or personal um, diary that you write that uh, god has written through somebody or anybody various people human beings to write down the daily happenings or the re- relationships a beautiful journal of the divine revelation history and there are four stages of this divine revelation history of this divine revelation first one is divine revelation through creation second one is revelation through the messengers revelation through jesus which is complete and perfect and the fourth one is the revelation through the holy catholic church then we saw that the bible of god is the written form of the divine revelation and we have the sacred tradition which is in the unwritten form then we said the canonical nature the measuring rod of the fa- uh, carpenter were, were taken as a measuring rod of christians to live a life of holiness bible can be used then we said uh, there are protestant biblical translations which we should not use we should not use we should use only the catholic translations which can be the good news bible the uh, nrsv bible uh, rsv bible or the jerusalem bible and in order to find out whether it is a catholic bible translation or not you should see the imprimatur or nihil obstat one of the bishops or any of the biblical scholars mostly the bishops they will give the imprimatur sign uh, okay the imprimatur is given by so and so bishop of so and so place that has to be taken into consideration while you buy read any bible all other bibles are not to be used uh, to read in your uh, day to day life and then we said when we say that the holy bible is inspired there are four things that you should understand that the writer was clearly inspired by the holy spirit to write the bible god only in wanted the author to write those messages which is included in the bible the bible will not make mistake about the divine subjects that are dealt in the bible and the style language theological views uh, humanly uh colors or the humanly uh, aspects of the person can have affected the divine revelation that one has written down then we saw the meaning can be the five senses that you can understand and read the bible which can be the literal sense spiritual sense symbolic sense moral sense and the anagogical sense the five senses that you can find out how to read the bible and to make interpretation you have three principles first one is the content and unity of the whole bible has to be considered the living tradition of the church has to be taken seriously and when you interpret you cannot go against the church magisterium and according to the christian faith so that is the today's class in chapter 6 now one thing that i want you to is download on to your smartphones or laptops katena c a t e n a katena is a bible app which is very beautifully uh, interwoven with the bible verses along with the teachings of the church fathers so if you take a bible verse and click on it you will get various other transla- uh, translations or interpretations in short by various church father saints so katena is very useful and i want you to make a decision that there will not be a day spent in your life without reading the holy book of bible so if you decide today to read the holy book of bible for sure your life will take a great transformation and i want you to decide today that there will not be a day in your life without reading the bible Finally as an homework i can give you uh, a small exercise that is you must take into consideration 
one of the parable of Jesus. Any of the parable. There are various parables of Jesus. Take one of them and write on the top of the page which gospel, chapter and the Bible verse that parable is written. Then you first take the understanding, the first meaning that you understood by reading that Bible parable. It can be any parable, whichever parable of your choice. And then you write down a meditative uh, understanding that you have about this parable. Parable. Okay. So you can take help of any fathers or sisters, religious, those who are there in your parish, and write down a two-page, two A4 size page uh, interpretation or explaining your in your words that parable and submit it to your class teacher. Thank you. God bless you. Let us end the class by thanking God for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen. O oh, merciful Lord, we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens from the throne of your glory. Thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by eliminating darkness and spreading light. O oh Jesus, you said, it is not the will of my heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. We thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom. Following the example of Mother Mary who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the Lord, we too pray that we may be strengthened to do God's will in every walk of our life. Amen.